Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video we're going to talk about how to write a procedure. So firstly we're going to discuss what is a procedure or, or also um, discussed as a method. We're going to look over some particular tips for writing a procedure. What are some things that we need to be remembering? What are some do's and don'ts? And then particularly going to highlight that for you with an example, um, looking at an activity of making a Play-Doh volcano. Um, I understand it's a bit of a strange, it might seem a bit of a strange choice. It's an activity my son has just recently done for his schoolwork, and so you'll you'll be able to see exactly kind of how that works. All right. So what is a procedure, or what is a method? Okay. So we would use these two terms. Um, I've put both of them in there because depending on where you are at the moment, you know, one of these terms might be more familiar to you than the other. Essentially, we're looking at a set of instructions. Now we're focusing on a scientific investigation here, but think about it like the set of instructions in a recipe. It tells you exactly how to cook that dish, it tells you exactly what steps you should do and how you should do them, it uses, you know, ideally uses clear and specific instructions, it tells you particular amounts of things you need to do, how long you might need to do them for, what you might be looking for in that step to see that that step is complete before moving on. And it's also intended to be a set of instructions that as you follow them, that you should be able to get the complete recipe, you know, or, or the dish at the end should look exactly as the, the, the recipe writer intended. That is, it, the instructions should be clear enough that the dish you end up with is the same one that they did when they designed it, rather than some kind of, you know, imitation of it that's, that's a, a poor cousin. But if we're thinking about it more in a scientific investigation context, we might think about it more as a sequence of steps that was followed in the particular experiment or is designed to be followed by someone to generate the data in their experiment. Okay, and so in, there are some things that we need to be mindful of here. That in order for that experiment to be replicated to be able to generate the same sort of set of data to get a similar set of results if the experiment is a valid and reliable one, it needs sufficient detail. In order for someone else to be able to successfully experiment, we, we need to know what sort of equipment, how much, you know, like how long or how, you know, what mass or, or length or volume of, of different substances or reactants we might need. How exactly was it done? How often was it done? You know, had, was it repeated? If so, how many times and what were they looking for in repeating it? You know, these are the sorts of details that really need to be in the procedure to make it specific and sufficiently um, detailed that someone could follow it accurately without having seen you or met you and um, to, to get the same sort of results. So here are some tips to help you to be able to write one successfully. All right, so number your steps. We're talking about a sequence of steps, um, you know, it's something that's followed in a particular order. Now, in an ex experiment, there may be certain steps that could be done in it. You know, it could be swapped around and it doesn't change the outcome, but likely the things have to be done in a certain order to be successful. In the same way that in following a recipe, that if you do things out of order, it's likely not to work, especially for some things that are much more complicated or much more um, fragile, you know, that then you have to do it in the right order. So number your steps so it's clear to the, about the sequence. Begin each step with an imperative verb. Now, imperative verb might be what you might say an active verb or a bossy word. You know, that these are terms that you might be familiar with. Measure, pour, mix, record, heat, stir, cut. Um, it, it tells you what, or tells the reader what to do. What action are they doing? And also it might include relevant adverbs to help them in how to carry that out. Carefully pour, slowly mix, you know, quickly add or quickly measure. You know, that these are, are the sorts of things that might be necessary for the reader um, in terms of how to do it. We've also got to mention specific equipment used in each step. Was it a measuring cylinder, thermometer, a pair of tweezers, some forceps? Was it a scalpel? Um, is it using a beaker, a conical flask, a hot plate, a magnetic stirrer, a burette, a pipette? Okay, use the name the equipment and name the specific quantities in each step with the units that you would be using. You know, was it a certain number of grams of this substance? How many mils of this liquid? How many meters of wire or, or distance are we, are we looking for? Be specific with the quantities and the units. Okay, so number the steps, imperative verbs, equipment and quantities. And also make sure that if there are repeats in the experiment, as all uh, effective experiments should, in order to get good data, make sure that it's clear when and how often you repeat it. 
Do you do three trials, five trials, ten trials, one hundred trials? Are you repeating until concordant or kind of consistent data is obtained? You know, that these are instructions that the reader needs to know. So let's have a look at an example before and after. Okay, so these are this is the activity I was mentioning that my son um, had recently done, making a Play-Doh volcano. Now this activity worked very successfully for him, but he's very young. And, and in terms of being able to, to follow these instructions, this is more or less a version of what he told me when I asked him to explain it back. So they say pour flour, salt, jelly crystals and olive oil in a bowl, add cold water into the bowl, mix it, then knead the dough. Put a glass jar on a big plate, then put all the dough around the glass jar. When it dries, put vinegar and jelly crystals into the jar, add bicarb soda to make it erupt and watch what happens. Okay, now there is some detail here. There is a certain level of sequencing here that would be possible for someone to follow. But it, there's a whole lot of things here that could be done better if this were a much more scientific investigation, especially for a higher level um, that we might be operating at. There's no numbered steps. There is a sense of sequence, but not anything in specifics. It's not specific enough in details. How much flour? How much salt? How are you mixing it? What, what kind of cold water does it need to be? How big is the jar? How big is the plate? How long do you wait for it to dry, etc. Okay, it doesn't mention all the equipment that you might need. You know, how are you mixing it? With a spoon, with a spatula, by hand? You know, are you putting it in a machine and mixing it by, by in that way? And it also doesn't mention specific quantities. Okay, so each of these sorts of things are some of those tips that I mentioned before. So if we start to apply those tips to this situation, to this specific example, and upgrade it, how would it look? Well, here we go. So you can see all of the detail that's here. I'm not going to read it through line by line because you are capable of reading. But you can see that it looks very different to the example you just saw. We have numbered steps for one. So you get a sense of the order in which things need to happen to make it successful. You know, so that the Play-Doh volcano you end up with in this activity is exactly the same one that the person who wrote it intended you to get rather than some weird kind of, you know, failed version of it. Okay, we have imperative verbs, that is bossy words, mix, pour, place, pack, measure, pour. We also have adverbs when necessary, so carefully pour the bicarb soda from the paper towel into the vinegar. You know, so maybe it's, we're talking about slowly mix or quickly mix, quickly add. You know, the, these are um, kind of, um, the, these add to the, the detail in those instructions to really help the person carrying it out to know exactly how to do it. Okay. We mentioned specific equipment and specific quantities. We've got units for when we're measuring flour and salt, for example, in grams. We're measuring, um, you know, we're measuring cold water in terms of milliliters. Okay, the, then, you know, these are, uh, and also we've got some more kind of conventional units of teaspoons, but also a more specific unit in grams that you might be able to follow. Okay, so you can see the difference that once we follow these steps, that this is a much more effective and much more useful method that is much more likely to generate the right kind of Play-Doh volcano that the person who would be writing it would intend. Okay, so we, we looked at what is a procedure or method. We're looking at a set of instructions to be followed to generate data. It needs sufficient detail that someone else could follow it and end up with the same sort of results. Because if the results are different, then it suggests that it's something more about the experiment rather than the design of the experiment. Okay, we looked at some tips for writing a procedure. We looked at using an example of making a Play-Doh volcano to illustrate the difference between a poorly written method and a, a sufficiently detailed, high quality method. All right, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye for now.